Today, we become legends. While Classes and Smite are generally good at categorising gods into a certain broad playstyle, there are definitely some gods in the game that break the core design principles of their class. Today, we're going to go over 10 gods that break their class design rules. So in no particular order, let's just jump right in. First up at number 10, we have Erlang Shen. Erlang is of course a warrior, but especially in the last few seasons of Smite, he only really plays jungle and plays very much like an assassin, even more so than his warrior designation. His huge damage and great use of basic attack item effects means he actually performs much better with a full damage or nearly full damage build rather than the typical tankier build we see that most warriors will make use of. This one is less of a clean break of class rules and more so just stretching the definition of a warrior to its breaking point, but I felt like Erlang deserved a spot on this list as the warrior that plays more like an assassin. Next up for number 9 we have Sol. Mages in Smite are the largest class by far and have to cover all magical damage dealing playstyles since they are the only magical damage dealing focused class in the game because guardians usually go tanky and not full damage. So we often find mages designed as, well, clearly not mages, and Sol is the first example of this. Sol is what is most commonly referred to as a magical ADC in Smite, in that she plays much more like a hunter than your traditional mage and plays the ADC role, while relying a lot on basic attacks fueled by her passive and will often build rings and attack speed synergies. Our number 8 pick we have Sukuyomi, who is similar to Erlang Shen from before, but breaks his class design in only a minor way compared to some others. Tsukuyomi's unique feature not common among assassins is of course his ranged assassin playstyle that has a lot of ranged poke tools to harass enemies before going all in. Most assassins in Smite are designed around being very close quarters and somewhat all in without the ability to hang back and poke from range. Tsukuyomi breaks the assassin class design by having so much ranged poke and zone control between his ranged autos, his 1, his 3 and even to a certain extent his ultimate which can be used from exceptional range. Though other assassins such as Thor and Thanatos share a similar mechanic of large range engaged tools. Next up at number 7 we have Freya, another of the magical ADCs and probably the most class breaking of them all I would say. Since she relies almost solely on basic attacks for her damage outside of her ultimate which let's be honest is usually used to finish off kills or for safety reasons. Other than that, Freya relies solely on her 2 steroids, her 1 and her 2 for big damage. Her 3 even does no damage at all to reinforce this aspect of her design that is of course not your typical burst mage, which is why she takes this spot on the list. Our first guardian on the list is going to take the number 6 spot and that's the Mayan Mountain of Madness, Kabraken. If any of you have watched Mithimu or Double J play this god, you know why he breaks the guardian class design. His burst damage output is pretty obscene and his ability to play defensive and peel for teammates is pretty lackluster in comparison to most other guardians. Leading Kabraken to have an almost assassin or aggressive warrior like playstyle where he runs at people in the backline and kills them, and often plays solo or jungle rather than the traditional support role that most guardians flock to. While full damage Kabraken with Polynomicon and Soul Reaver is probably more of a meme, it does spell out why he doesn't fit in with most guardians pretty well, and that's why he's taking the number 6 spot on this list. Halfway through at number 5 we have Kronos, another magical ADC. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of these on this list since they're the most class breaking designs that Hyrus goes for. Kronos of course has a great attack speed steroid and bonus AA damage on his 2, plus that same structure damage bonus that all magicals get, making him great as a magical ADC that builds some attack speed and can shred much more like a hunter than a typical mage. At number 4 on the list we have our second warrior, but this time it's not a warrior who plays very aggressive like an assassin, it's a warrior that plays very defensive like a guardian. And that is of course Horus. This guy was clearly designed from the ground up to be a support viable warrior that plays more like a physical guardian than a true warrior. He's somewhat viable in solo but definitely sees the majority of his play in support, filling that playstyle that is usually taken by a guardian, so in that way he definitely breaks the warrior playstyle. While other warriors have seen success in support in the past such as Hercules, Odin, Erlang Shen and others, these picks still play somewhat like a warrior being aggressive and diving enemies, Horus I feel like plays more true to an actual support playstyle which is why I felt he was deserving of a spot on this list. Coming in at number 3 we have the final magical ADC on the list I promise and of course that's Olorun. The most recent magical ADC to join the roster and this one can crit. Yeah if that doesn't leave a mark that this god is not your typical mage I don't know what will. Though Olorun is over 2 years old at this point so perhaps we're on track for another magical ADC next season, just speculation of course. But yeah, I know 4 spots on this list were just magical ADCs, but I would feel bad not including all of them since they are some of the best examples of class breaking designs in the game, but for these final two, I promise they're not magical ADCs. So taking that number 2 spot we have a mage, but this time it's a magical assassin not a magical ADC. That's right, I'm sure Al Kuang was one of the core designs that a lot of you thought of when seeing this video and you're recommended. The only real true magical assassin that was designed from the ground up to play just like a typical assassin but dealing magical damage. 
He of course has the mobility, invisibility, executes, all that stuff that are marks of assassins, not mages. Typically, anyway, I know there are some mages that border this line, like Morrigan and Hebo, that with a very loose definition could be considered magical assassins. But for me, Ao Kuang is the true and only magical assassin in the game that was clearly designed from the ground up, and so he'll be the one that makes this list. Which leaves my final pick for the video, and that's Jormungandr. This one was hard to choose as there are a fair few guardians that are designed as aggressive dive characters that play more like warriors, but I felt like Jorm and Kabrakan were the best two options for these. You could argue for others though for sure, such as Cthulhu, Jingchen, maybe some others, but Jorm and Kabrakan are pretty much the only guardians that see no real play in support aside from Cthulhu. Jorm sees the vast majority of his play in solo lane, filling a more warrior-like role for the team than a guardian. I don't care if your friend who's in silver frags with Yorm support by the way, I'm talking about in general and at higher levels of play, this doesn't really work, and so I give this spot to Yorm who's pretty much a magical warrior. And that's it for the top 10 gods that break their class design and smite. If you enjoyed this one and want to see more top 10s from me then definitely hit that sub button and the bell, plus drop a comment down below if you have any ideas for future top 10s on the channel. But other than that, I'll catch you guys in another one later on. Have a great day, and peace out you nerds.